Okay, we have Coach Harson here, and he is ready for questions. We'll go on the aisle here in the third row on the right. Yep. Good morning, everyone. All right. Good morning, Brian. Me? Yes. Good morning, Brian. Good morning. Uh, Jeff Spiegel, ABC 3340 in Birmingham. Uh, considering uh, the off-season inquiry and all, everything that you and your family were subjected to, uh, how much more difficult is this job than maybe you originally thought? And how has this strengthened yours and the team's resolve? Well, I mentioned this earlier. Um, matter of fact, just recently, coming out of the, the other conference, press conference that we had there. Um, yeah, and, and I'll go back and just say it again. You know, we talked about um, those things at that time and also talked about moving forward. And everything that we do... That we, when we talk about the past, it's just not helping uh, our present and our future. And so, you know, the focus right now is just on this team. And I would say the players and the coaches, um, they moved on very quickly because we all know we have work to do and we're trying to build something with this football program at Auburn um, that's hopefully special. And right now, I think with where our team is at and where our coaches are at, you feel that. And so, that's really been the, the entire focus. Um, I think it's made our team stronger. It's made our staff stronger. Um, you feel that conviction in the building for wanting to be there and, and to prove yourself each and every day, uh, which is you know, what our 1-0 really stands for, is just that improvement, that getting better, and, and starting over again. So to me, uh, everything in our program right now is just about making progress uh, each and every day. And I think that's the most important thing that we can teach our young players is, is just how to do that. That's really when we all feel most fulfilled and rewarded at the end of the day is when we made some sort of progress. And, and I want every one of our players and coaches to feel fulfilled and rewarded at the end of each and every day because we've made some sort of progress throughout the day. I mean, that's just, that's not just football, that's life. And, you know, what I've learned over time, when, when people are happy and they're making progress, you know what, it's fun and we work a whole lot better and we get a lot more done and, and we're a lot more productive. So I feel that with our team. Uh, I felt that coming over with Tank Bigsby and, and John Samuel Shanker, Derek Hall, like just sitting in that plane and flying over here together. Those guys, um, there's a great vibe. Like they're fun to be around. It's enjoyable, and um, you know we feel really good about the things that we've done leading up to this point, and we're excited about fall camp. Left side, fourth row. Good morning, Coach Jacob Go with ESPN 1067 in Auburn. When you took over as the head coach here at Auburn, and even here in year two, what are some of the major changes that you made within the program from the previous coaching <laughs> regime to when you took over? Oh, I don't know about the previous. There was nothing, you know, it was really wasn't about coming in and, and having a bunch of comparisons. It was just about what we had to do to get ourselves in a position to establish our program's expectations and then, you know, some of the, the values that we hold in our program. And really, that's what it comes back to uh, every day, right? We talk about winning an SEC championship and doing it with class. Well, what's class? Doing it with integrity. What's integrity? doing it with academic excellence. Well, what's academic excellence? All right, and then going back and then taking that to the values. All right, that's our goal. What are our values? Well, character, discipline, all right, toughness, grit, conviction, those type of things. And, and trying to help our players uh, and our coaches and everybody in that program understand what those things are. I mean, to me, that's, that is the development piece that we're no longer talking about very much any longer. All right, we got 18 to 22 year olds. We are trying to help them develop for the long game. It's the immediate success that we all want to have because you know what? We want to win and we want to make advancements each and every day. We want to make progress each and every day. But there's also the 30 year old version of that player that no one talks about. And that was really important to me. When I got into coaching, that was very clear to me what the responsibility of the head coach was for the guys I worked for is developing those players so that they could be successful way beyond our program. And some of that's lost right now. And, and right now, I mean, I think every single day in our program is like professional development. You know, you all pay money to bring people in to have somebody come talk to you, 
to share the same things that we talk about every single day. And, and I think our players are understanding that now. Every day is like professional development. So when you leave Auburn and you're done playing football at some point in your career, you can still go on and be successful. And there's nothing wrong with that. And, and I'm a big believer in it. And that's something that you know, we're trying to establish every single day. So every one of those things that we talked about, we have to go back and, and reevaluate where we are, what we're doing, how we're doing it. Maybe there's a better way that someone else is doing. Well, let's go take that. Let's go steal that and let's apply it to our program. If they're doing it better, let's go figure out how we can make it um, in, uh, in our program better by using their plan. And, you know, that's something that I think is extremely, extremely important. And, and you know, so it's the immediate right now, but as a head football coach, you're thinking about how much further this guy's going to be in one more year. And you see it on our team. I talked about it earlier. Just the advancement guys are making in their own individual efforts to just be better every single day. That's the best thing that we can give anybody is that kind of development and process so that they have that for the rest of their lives. And to me, that's, that's what we're trying to do. We're dealing with all these other things that try to distract us from that. But that's not what you, me, or any one of us, especially as you get older, that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is, do I have a plan? Do I have a process? Am I able to better myself each and every day? That's what everybody wants. And you either decide you want it at 18 or at 40, but it's somewhere everybody has that aha moment like, I need this. And we're just trying to get it done a lot sooner than most. Right side, fourth row. Uh, Michael Giddens, War Report, Auburn. Uh, Coach, Derek Mason ran a lot of zone concepts on defense last year. With Jess Schmetting taking over, um, what is this year's defensive identity going to look like? And second part, Vegas set the over-under for Auburn at five and a half games initially, speculating that you are going to be an underdog to a lot of teams that you beat last year. Uh, what is the feeling internally about that and the message to the team? Well, first thing, so as far as schemes, and thank you for actually asking me a football question. All right? I do appreciate that. I, I just got done yesterday talking to uh, some of the high school coaches in Alabama and got a chance to talk football and absolutely loved it. So scheme-wise, yeah, I mean, it really comes down to personnel. We'll play more man coverage. There'll be more man. And we did last year, too. It wasn't, it wasn't zone. We did those things. Um, you know, Coach Mason does a great job on the defensive side, and we did those things. And a lot of it comes back to your personnel, how well we did it. All right, you got to go back and, and improve in some of those areas. <clears throat> but Coach Schmetting, whatever he has planned for our defense, um, it'll be a combination of all those things. Uh, and I know that. And like I said before, Coach Schmetting is a guy that I don't, worry, I don't worry about Coach Schmetting. He cares more about what he's doing than I do. I mean, he is on it, and he will have that defense prepared and ready for what our personnel is and then what we have to do schematically to help us win that football game. Um, here's what I know, all right, as far as the, the, the records or whatever, all right? That doesn't come from our coaching, our peers. It doesn't come from the other coaches that we play. It doesn't come from the other teams that we play. And it comes from speculation, really, from the media. And we don't play the media, all right? We don't. And so nobody's been in our walls and has seen what our guys are doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Nobody's been there at 6 a.m watching those guys run decks on Friday morning. And so you have no idea. I do. I get to see them every day. I get a progress report on every one of our players every single day. I know where they are. And as far as I'm concerned, like none of that matters. It doesn't matter. We're going to prepare ourselves to go play on Saturday. And we're going to try to be the best football team every Saturday when we step on the football field. That's what matters. Now, how you do that, that's what matters most to me. All right, how we do it from Sunday through Friday. And that's what our guys are learning. Sunday through Friday is really important for Saturday. And I've been in programs where Sunday through Friday are not that important, but Saturday is, and that's a mistake. So that's where our focus is at right now. I don't control what everybody says. And uh, if someone said we're going to win every game, well, you know, who? And, and does that mean we're going to? Absolutely not. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue to progress, make progress. We're going to keep getting better. And the attitude and the mentality of this football team needs to stay what it is right now. Each and every day, whether we win or lose, all right, we've got to have a certain way of handling that. And I think handling success is equally as important as handling failure. 
And so those are things that we're working on. It goes right back to the, the, the core of our program, the values and the things we're trying to teach these guys. And the byproduct is going to be winning football games. Last two questions. First is right here on the front, and then we're going to go third row, second on the end. Good morning, Coach. A.P. Stedham, the big GP for yes. Alabama. how are you? I'm doing good, Coach. Thank you. Yeah, good to see you. Yes, absolutely. Coach, um, what are some of the things you, you want to see from your starting quarterback? And are you a coach that doesn't mind playing a couple <laughs> quarterbacks to be yeah. successful? Yeah. Um, no, I have no problem playing a couple quarterbacks. You know, we've done that in the past. And we've won championships doing that. Um, so it's like any other position, right? One of the things about – I really believe about football is if you deserve to play, we're going to find you a role. And, and that can also include the quarterback. And so if you've got another guy that deserves to play, there could be an opportunity for him. And it's different by every game and it's different by plan, but uh, there will be an opportunity for him. What do we look for? We look for toughness. All right. And I've said this a lot of years, and this goes back. I studied, I played the position, I studied the position and, and spent a lot of time, 10 years just going through, all right, talking to all these quarterback coaches, gurus, people, studying, watching, and just diving into, all right, what is it about quarterbacks that I think makes them successful? And the number one, is, number one thing is toughness. Uh, and that's physically and mentally. You know, you're going to take a hit from a corner that nobody blocked, and you got to get up and get up fast, all right, because everybody's watching you. Mentally, you get way too much credit and way too much blame. All right, you got to be a guy, so that's one, toughness, preparation. If you don't prepare and listen to every story of every quarterback that's been the most successful, all they talk about is preparation, preparation, preparation. If you don't prepare, you're not going to be elite. All right, decision making. Well, if you don't make great decisions, you're not going to be on the field. So you're out there making a decision for the entire football team, not just the offense, not just for you, not just on that play, but everybody in that program, you're making decisions every time that ball is in your hands. And then the last one is accuracy. And we spend a ton of time on just the footwork piece, on placing that ball. You know, if you want that ball on the outside number on a 12-yard out and you want it on his outside number in stride, not inside, perfectly thrown, that can happen. But it takes a lot of work to do that. Your feet, your arm strength, all right, your eyes, all right, everything mechanically has got to be dialed in order to make that throw. And you're dealing with all the factors in front of you. So... And then the last piece that comes with that is leadership, you know, but you got to do the first four. You're not going to be a great leader at that position if you can't do the first four. So those are things that I've always had for our quarterbacks. Those are things that go back to Kellen Moore. And I remember the first day I put it up on the wall in my office and Kellen Moore is looking at it and he's kind of smirking and, and I got it back from the sign shop. I didn't even see it, but preparation was spelled wrong. <laughs> so uh, I ended up ripping it off the wall. I was so mad. I was so proud of this that I, went, I came up with this, and I ended up ripping it off the wall, and they were kind of laughing. But then you know, I put it back up there, and, and uh, you know, Brett Rippon the other day sent me a picture of Russell Wilson's, and a lot of them are the same. And so those are things that I believe for that position we have to have to be successful. Our guys know that, quarterbacks. Uh, they're very aware of it, and those guys are, I think, displaying a lot of those things. The toughness, we're going to find out who that starter is. Eventually, we'll find out what that looks like when we go out there and play, but I think it's those qualities. Final question, third row. Lyndon Blake, WBRC. Coach, the players have mentioned how bonded they are and how that's grown this offseason. What have you done outside the complex, off the field, to build that chemistry? Oh, we've done a few things. You guys saw the paintball. Uh, event that we did. Uh, it was a good idea until it was the coaches versus the players, <laughs> and then it became a bad idea, um, especially in the last game. So they all ganged up on us. Uh, but it was awesome. We had, we had a great time. We also, you know, we've been doing things. We, we, we've always had, we've had these culture groups since I've been there, and I've done this back at Boise. So we have these unity groups, and we have these small culture groups, all right, about 17 of them. And uh, every coach has about five to six guys. Uh, we're having players over to our houses for dinner. You know, we're having those type of events. We brought a group in called the Program, which is a military group. And <laughs> at the beginning, I don't know how excited the players were, but you're doing calisthenics, you're doing jumping jacks, you're doing things together, push-ups, but you got to do it perfectly in perfect order, all together. And one person is leading, but you really find out that everybody is. And so how they teach and what they do is amazing. Uh, and, and our military is the best at these things, and that's why you bring them in to teach, all right, how do you build this cohesiveness with the team? The next morning at 5 a.m., we're, we're in the water with sweatshirts on, swimming, 
Some guys can't swim, some guys can, so you're, you're, you're helping each other, right? And some guys, you know, feel very scared, but you've got all these people around you to take care of you. So, uh, and we've had speakers come in. We're going to do more events as fall camp hits because, you know, at times in fall camp it gets boring, so you've got to keep everybody's attention. But it's things like that. But ultimately what I would say is the players have made a decision. I think the new players that we brought in have made a huge impact. I think our staff because they know how important that is to me and how they've emphasized that has been a big part of, of why our team feels much tighter than what it was. Uh, and I think that negativity is gone. I really do. I just think, you know, one of, the, one of the most sacred places that you can ever be is in the locker room. And, and sometimes, you know, what I tell people all the time, we all have issues, we all have bad days, but once you verbalize that, everybody gets to experience it. So maybe it's just you. And maybe it's something you really need to take back before you blurt it out of your mouth. You know, is this something we can't overcome? Is this something that, that really needs to be said? Does it have to be negative? And I think, you know, there's some people that were just naturally negative. Um, and we don't have many of those guys any longer uh, that are that way. We have guys that when there's a challenge, just figure it out rather than, you know, complain and point the finger at whoever, you know, made that happen. So. Uh, it's really a maturity of our team, the leadership of our team, some of the events that we've done, but, but ultimately it goes back to the players in that locker room. They've decided that this is who we're going to be. And when they decided that, it became a player-driven team. And now as coaches, just give them a good plan. Don't spoil the talent and let those guys go out there and prepare themselves for when we step into that arena and get a chance to play. Thank you, Coach. Good job. Okay, thank you.